The Jeep lineup is filled with some heavy hitters, such as the Wrangler, the Grand Cherokee, and also the Wagoneer. But one crossover that seems to get forgotten about is the Compass. Now it has received a facelift very recently, and I want to check out what is new for the 2022 model. So in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Compass Limited, check out all the features that this vehicle comes with, and also see why, if you're looking at buying a family-friendly, practical, and affordable crossover, then maybe taking a look at the Compass might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Central Jeep Chrysler and Dodge in Raynham, Massachusetts, for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below, so you can check out their extensive Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. With pretty much every brand offering a list of crossovers, companies like Jeep that cornered the SUV market decades ago have been pushed into further developing their products, possibly deviating away from where the manufacturer was in the late 2010s. The new Grand Cherokee and Wagoneer are unquestionably steering Jeep into a whole new era of being luxurious and adventurous. The 2022 Compass, despite only experiencing a minor update, reflects Jeep's ambitions to stand out in a crowded market by bringing to the table vehicles that are not just off-road capable, but also comfortable daily drivers that are practical and suitable for American consumers. Starting off with pricing, the Jeep Compass Limited comes in at just under $34,500, placing it right in the middle of the available trim levels to choose from for the 2022 model year. Being a brand that specializes in crossovers and SUVs, Jeep's approach to this market is rather different compared to domestic and Japanese manufacturers where the Compass and Cherokee are both considered, at least by Jeep, to be compact SUVs. However, the dimensions for the Compass are similar to the Subaru Crosstrek, Kia Seltos, and Mazda CX-30, putting it under the same umbrella as subcompact crossovers that are priced between $25,000 and $35,000. Yet, the Compass is a unique vehicle, as its higher roofline and wider stance makes it a family-friendly option that's both accommodating and practical with interior spacing that would be on par with smaller compact crossovers like a Mazda CX-5. With this SUV wearing the Jeep badge, ground clearance comes in at right around 8.1 inches for the Limited, which should be enough to tackle unplowed roads during the winter. 2022 does usher in some minor changes for the exterior, as the Jeep lineup continues to evolve. Still retaining its resemblance to last generation's Grand Cherokee, the headlights and front grille will immediately be recognizable for buyers who've purchased a Compass in the past. But with Jeep cleaning up the area surrounding the fog light housings and adding gloss black accents that sits just above the lower air vents, this crossover now looks more distinguishable, but also outwardly speaking, more refined. While on our model we have halogen fog lamps, the Limited can be equipped with premium LED lighting for better illumination as you traverse the trails and travel down dimly lit streets. Moving over to the side profile, the Compass Limited will be sitting on 18-inch diamond-cut aluminum wheels with the ability to upgrade to 19s. Due to the smaller tire size, ride quality will be on par with others in this segment, and adding to the comfort, the suspension is rather forgiving so you won't be cringing as you go over the bumps and imperfections on city streets. You'll have color contrast and gloss black side mirrors with turns of the indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, the rear fascia goes untouched for the 2022 model year, as the mid-cycle refresh focuses primarily on the interior and closing the gap that separates the Compass from the Cherokee. Keeping this crossover looking modern will be the LED taillights, but also for the Limited, the two-toned exterior is an attention grabber. To complete the final third is the plastic cladding that does add a rugged aesthetic, but it should be worth mentioning that when you opt for the Elite Group package, 
gloss black trim will be found throughout, making the Compass look classier and upscale. Under the hood, the Jeep Compass is powered by a 2.4 liter, naturally aspirated four cylinder engine that produces 177 horsepower and 172 pound feet of torque. And since our model today is a limited, we have the nine speed automatic transmission. But a six speed auto does come standard for compasses with front wheel drive. As expected, this crossover isn't the quickest nor the peppiest, yet it does fall in line with competitors with similar non-turbo powertrains. However, where the compass does impress is with a smooth and direct steering feel that does differ a bit from other domestic offerings in this segment. For 2022, all Jeep Compass Limited models come equipped with four-wheel drive, whereas the Sport, Latitude, and Altitude offer both front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. When it pertains to fuel economy, you're looking at right around 22 miles per gallon in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, standard for the Limited will be heated and leather trim seats for both the driver and passenger, with the driver's side being power adjustable. Through the optional $3,000 Elite Group package, there will be a slew of upgrades that gives the front passenger power adjustability and you'll have premium leather upholstery to increase the level of comfort you'll experience. However, even without this package, the seats provide a lot of cushioning and support. In front of you, between the analog gauges, a diesel display will showcase a wide range of information. But more impressive is the resolution and quality that's better than some rivals in this market. New for the Refresh Compass, you can opt for a full digital gauge cluster on a limited trim to modernize the interior and make the user experience more intuitive. Then moving over to the infotainment system, you'll have a 10 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility with onboard navigation being available. And for this review, we do have the premium Alpine speaker system. One of the highlights for the 2022 model year is the new Uconnect 5 head unit that's becoming more prevalent across the Jeep family of vehicles, bringing a much needed update to the menu layout. And despite a lack of physical buttons, this user interface is rather straightforward and easy to use, thanks to the icons found at the bottom of the screen. While the buttons for the dual zone climate control and dials for the volume and tuning are mounted further down the dashboard, it's from this screen where you can adjust the temperature but also access the two level heated seats and heated steering wheel. As usual, you have a rear backup camera, but through the driver assist group one package, a 360 degree top view camera and front and rear park assist will add another layer of safety when entering or exiting a parking spot. Just beneath this touchscreen, there will be a row of buttons for the auto start stop, track control, lane departure warning and hazards. Then returning to the center console, there'll be a USB-C and USB input, and a cubby for loose change, a wallet, or a smartphone. Next to the gear shifter, you will have a drive mode selector for when you encounter snow, sand, or mud, and you'll also find the button for your four-wheel drive lock. For the center storage compartment, you'll find enough room for smaller items. And rounding out the front seating area, on our model, we have the dual-pane panoramic sunroof that brings in a lot of natural light to the interior. Now moving on to the second row, we're gonna start off on the driver's side. And this seat has been adjusted to someone of my height around 5'5". And surprisingly, I have a good amount of legroom to work with back here. Now for a vehicle in this segment, I think the Compass is very much on par with the Subaru Crosstrek, Kia Seltos, also the Volkswagen Taos, and the Honda HRV. I think you can definitely fit smaller kids back here, no problem in their child seats. But also, I think even for average size adults, this could certainly work as well. So if you are looking for an affordable daily driver and you don't need a vehicle the size of a Cherokee or other compact crossovers, I think this could certainly work for sure, especially since you do have a decent amount of headroom even with this massive panoramic uh, sunroof. But also, I think for taller passengers on the height of 5'9", possibly 5'10", they don't need to worry about hitting their head on the headliner. Then moving over to the center seat, the center hump isn't aggressive in terms of height, but certainly within, in terms of width. 
And with that, I would say that you might not be able to fit a third person back here because of the lack of legroom, but also shoulder room as well. And that is no surprise at all. Most vehicles in this segment are too compact and too small to accommodate that third person. Now, maybe on a shorter drive and you have only three small kids back here, it might be able to work. It might be uh, spacious enough to allow people to feel comfortable. But I do believe, though, that for longer drives, I think people will definitely be complaining about the lack of that leg room and shoulder room. And then on the passenger side, this heat is adjusted all the way back and somewhat on a recline. And I still have a few inches of legroom to work with here. So this is better than the Mazda CX-30, which I think is not conducive at all for a family. But also, more importantly, this does slot right into place in its segment and market. Also back here, you do have two rear air vents to go along with a USB input and 12-volt outlet. And rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around, to the back. No surprises here, there won't be a power lift gate on this model. But inside, behind the second row of seats, is an eye opening 27.2 cubic feet of room. Now, we take a look at this vehicle from the outside, you're thinking, okay, it's gonna be probably no more practical than a Kia Seltos or maybe even a Honda HRV. But this is actually closer in dimensions to some smaller compact crossovers like a Mazda CX-5 or even a Ford Escape. Now, I wouldn't say this vehicle would be a great one-on-one -on -one comparison just because of the powertrain under the hood and the fact that we don't get a turbo. But if you are looking for a vehicle of this size and you want to max out that practicality, the Compass has to be on your list of considerations. I was able to fit all my camera gear today, no problem. So it has two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod. I also think you'll be able to fit probably four to five bags of luggage if you are going on a road trip. Then with the second row seats fold, that space for more than double in size to right around 60 cubic feet. And I think ultimately what you have here to work with is a vehicle that is spacious for the second row, also practical for daily use. And when you take a look at the interior now because of the updates, it's a nice upscale and she level luxury vehicle that if you can't afford a crossover over forty to forty-five thousand dollars, the compass slots into place very nicely. Also on the left side of the rear cargo area, there will be a cubby for some smaller items like maybe a water bottle or a first aid kit. Then beneath the floor mat, you will have your fix-it flat kit, but also there's additional storage back here for some smaller items such as tech gadgets or anything else of value you don't want people to possibly see and steal if this vehicle is unattended for a while in a parking lot. All right, so let's take the Jeep Compass out for a quick test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, and how it compares to other subcompact crossovers out there. Now, there are some people who think that the Compass goes up against the Mazda CX-5, also the Ford Escape, and pricing, yeah, does match up. However, when you take a look at the exterior dimensions, the Compass is significantly shorter and would go head-to-head -head with vehicles like the CX-30, also the Subaru Crosstrek. So I want to see how the Jeep Compass differs from those vehicles or other subcompacts because I think Jeep is going in a whole new direction here, especially when you take a look at what they've done for the refresh for the 2022 model year, where you have more of an upscale interior, all new technology, also feels a bit more upscale in here. And my thinking here when it comes to what Stellantis is up to, they want to turn Jeep into being a brand for everybody, whether it is somebody wants to go off-road with the Wrangler, maybe you want something a bit more upscale with the new Jeep Grand Cherokee and also the Wagoneer, or if you're looking for something a bit more affordable, now you have a vehicle like the Compass that also has more of a plush and upscale interior that just gives you more of that quality and refinement that you're looking for. Now, to be honest, with the naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine and the nine-speed automatic transmission, it's not the most peppy. It's a bit more on the lethargic side, but for most vehicles in this market, this really isn't anything too different. But also more importantly is that we actually have a traditional automatic, unlike some CVTs that we see from Japanese manufacturers. Now, of course, with this engine being naturally aspirated, I would like to see a turbo at least offer for the higher trims in the lineup. Because when you're spending close to $35,000, $36,000, if not more, especially for a well-equipped Compass, now you're in the CX-30 2.5 turbo 
price range. You're also now going head to head with compact crossovers. I do understand why Jeep may not drop in a turbo just because that would go up against the Jeep Cherokee. So they are kind of straddling a fine line there when it comes to the performance. Now, when you do take a look at what you are getting around 177 horsepower, it's not too bad. It would be on par with other vehicles in this segment and market. One thing that is standing out to me though is really just how comfortable the ride quality is. I was expecting a bit more of a rigid suspension and also feeling the bumps a bit more, of course, with this being a Jeep, but it's actually not that bad. The suspension is pretty forgiving. Also another thing too that I really like here is that the interior is very well insulated. You don't really hear a lot of the outside world and it is relatively quiet. So I like the fact that it does feel a bit more premium and it does reflect this price point. What also sets the Jeep Compass apart now in this market is the fact that we see Stellantis technology making its way into these vehicles where the Uconnect 4 system was a bit outdated, was certainly showing its age, whereas the Uconnect 5 is certainly higher quality and what you would expect in this price range. It's going to put the Chevrolet and GM infotainment systems to shame in my opinion, but also I think could give Ford a run for their money with the Sync 4 system. So I really like what Jeep is doing here. Also, another thing that I think is a great addition is the fact that the interior is a bit more refined and higher quality, where you have soft touch materials on the dashboard now, and it just gives you more of a entry level luxury type quality that we just didn't have during the pre-facelift models. So I love to see that. When it comes to overall vision in this vehicle, you have plenty of it. Nice panoramic view in front of you. A-pillars are rather thin. Also looking out to your side mirrors. They are placed in a good spot and decently sized so I can see what is in my blind spots. Then looking out back, even though we have more of a thinner rear window, I can see everything behind me even with the headrest in the way. So love to see that. Also, compared to other vehicles in this market, such as the Subaru Crosstrek or even the Hyundai Kona, depending on how far you're gonna go with the trim levels with that vehicle, this feels like a traditional crossover. You sit very high up in this vehicle where you have a nice commanding feel over the road. Whereas the Crosstrek, even with its decent ground clearance, it drives more like a car, it drives more like a hatchback, whereas this really does feel like a crossover. So I think if you're looking for more of an SUV-like experience, then I think that's what the Jeep Compass is definitely going to give you. One rival that I've completely forgotten about in this segment and during this test drive is the Ford Bronco Sport. I think that is a great comparison one-on-one, -on -one, especially when you take a look at the base engine from that vehicle, but also when it comes to the fact that the Ford Bronco Sport is supposed to be off-road worthy while still being affordable, and that's kind of where the Jeep Compass slots into place in the Jeep lineup. Now, the Ford Bronco Sport is gonna have a hard-touch plastic dashboard. It's not going to feel as refined or as comfortable, especially when it comes to the seating, whereas the Jeep Compass, at least for this trim, it's, going to have more of that higher quality feel, especially even with the leather stitched steering wheel. It feels really great in the hands, very beefy for the 10 two positions, but also the nine and three as well. But these seats also provide a good amount of comfort and support, which is a bit of a stark difference from that Ford Bronco Sport. And I do think that when it comes to your daily driver, this is gonna give you that offer capability, but it's better suited for being on road and going to the grocery store, running errands, and also maybe even going on a longer road trip with the family. That's where the Jeep Compass, I think, is a great offering. And again, even though the nine-speed automatic transmission isn't the best that's offered from Jeep, it's better than the CVTs that we see from the Japanese manufacturers. So from that standpoint, I'm not gonna complain. I would like to see a better powertrain, but for what it is, especially if you are looking for more of a lower trim model, I think that there's really nothing else you could really want in this vehicle. It's giving you everything. Now, of course, you can opt for a full digital gauge cluster, although one thing to keep in mind here, and this is really just a buying tip that I wanna give you guys, that if you are looking at buying a vehicle right now and you don't want to deal with the car shortages and also deal with waiting eight to 12 weeks for your vehicle to arrive and you don't care about having a full digital gauge cluster, 
you're going to find compasses on the market so and also on inventories just like today here at Central 44 down in Raynham so you're gonna be able to stop by the dealership pick up the vehicle and be on your way so we're finally starting to see these vehicles arrive on inventory and that's great to see for people who have been waiting for an opportunity like this to pick up a vehicle immediately now unfortunately we will not be doing highway driving for this test drive I actually don't know my way around this part of Massachusetts so I wasn't really sure how I wanted to plan this test drive out but what I will say though is that this vehicle does feel very well refined it feels plush and honestly for what it is as an affordable subcompact maybe when it comes to price ranges bordering on entering that compact crossover territory I think it's offering a lot of value here especially since Jeep did give us a bit more of an upgrade when it comes to that technology and it just feels as though that Jeep is moving in a whole new direction and without making wholesale changes without really going overboard with the redesign and what you have right now in the lineup I think this is more than adequate but also I think this is very much on par with rivals in this segment. So to quickly wrap up this review the Jeep Compass really is a surprising crossover even though the naturally aspirated four-cylinder under the hood that's paired with a nine-speed automatic transmission isn't the most engaging or sporty that's not what the Compass needs to be right now. When you take a look at the interior comfort, the quality, the refinement, the new technology, also the interior spacing and overall practicality, this vehicle seems to be a bit more upscale than some of its rivals. And it is setting the tone for where Jeep is going to be in the future because I feel as though that the Compass is like a baby Grand Cherokee, especially if we had the full digital gauge cluster on this model. But I love the fact that this feels a bit more modern. It also really has more of this upscale look to it for the dashboard that we just don't really see in this segment. So if you are somebody that is looking for a vehicle that is a comfortable daily driver that does give you all the bells and whistles that you're looking for, but also more importantly, has that interior spacing where you can have average as adults in the second row and also go on a longer road trip, I think that's where the Compass might be a great value and also a great option if you are looking for a vehicle in this price range. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.